At some point, hopefully, you'll want to save your work. Doing that in Blender is pretty much the same as in most other programs. Let's just make a change to our default scene here. I'll move my cube off to the side, hit Shift A, and add a monkey. Okay, so now we have our masterpiece, and we want to save it for later. So we can go to File, and click either Save or Save As. If we haven't saved already, then we can just click Save, and it'll prompt us with where we want to save it to. By default, it'll be called Untitled.Blend, but we can call it whatever we'd like. It'll automatically add .blend to the end of your file, and you can go ahead and click Save. Now if we were to go and make another change, I'll just add a sphere, then we can easily and quickly save our file just by hitting Ctrl and S. That's also the same hotkey that most other programs use, so it's nice for muscle memory. So that's pretty straightforward, but there are a couple things to know about saving in Blender. One is that it'll also save your UI layout. So if I really like to work with a wide properties editor and a really tall timeline here, then when I go ahead and hit Control S, it'll save that in the file. So if I go to File and New and General, of course it'll reset to the defaults here. But then if I go to File and instead of just opening it up here, I can also just go to File and Open Recent and choose the blend file I was working with before, then it'll restore all of my editors to the way that they were. Most of the time when you're working on your own files, this is incredibly helpful. But sometimes you don't want that because you're working with somebody else's file or from a file that you grabbed off the internet and they have a really weird setup that you just don't like. Or maybe you're opening a really old Blender file where the headers are on the bottom and everything's a little bit messed up when it gets translated over to the new versions of Blender. So for whatever reason, there are some times where you might not want to load the UI. So let's go look at how to do that. I'll go to File and New and General again just to reset everything. And now let's go to File and Open, choose that same file, but this time I'll click the little Settings icon to bring up the sidebar, and I'll unclick Load UI. Now when I click Open, it'll load all of my objects, my scenes, everything that's in the folder, but it won't change anything about the UI. So if you open up a file where things are a little bit messed up, then try doing that instead, and then saving again, and that way it'll just bring the UI back to its defaults. Now if you're working in a Blend file for a really long time, then it might be helpful to save different versions of it. And this is something I usually do as I work. Before I make a substantial change, I'll go ahead and increment my file just so I have something to easily fall back on if the change goes wrong for whatever reason. So to do that, we can go to File, and this time I'll click Save As. And you'll notice that the text input has turned completely red, which is just a warning that I'm saving over an existing file. But in this case, I don't want to do that. I actually want to increment my file. And I can do that super easily just by clicking the plus button. Now it might be better to have an underscore in here. So I'll just call this underscore zero one. And if I just click the plus button, it'll just continue adding numbers. And if I hit the minus button, it'll subtract numbers. Honestly, I don't know why more programs don't have that functionality because it's super useful. So I'll go ahead and click Save As, and now we're good to go. Now it's pretty rare that Blender will just full on crash, but sometimes it does happen. Luckily, it has a good autosave system for in case you ever have to deal with that. To load an autosave, you can go to File, Recover, and choose Autosave. This will bring up your local temp folder with all of its recent autosaves. You can adjust the autosave behavior in Edit and Preferences, go down to Save and Load, and change the number of minutes between autosaves. But usually the default 2 is pretty good. Blender is really great about doing this in the background, so it'll never interrupt your work. Another interesting setting here is Save Versions, and by default this is set to 1. So every time that you save a file, I'll just hit Control S here, and I'll bring this up in my file browser, you'll notice that we not only have a whatever underscore zero one dot blend, we also have a dot blend one version of that. What this is doing is essentially just kicking the previous save over to a dot blend one version, so you can always get back to that previous save if you need to. Usually I work with this off because I prefer to increment my files manually, but it can be a useful fallback sometimes. So let's say I make a really horrible change, something, I'll just make my cube really big just as an example, and I hit Control S accidentally, and oh no, I've saved over my file and I can't get back. Well, with the dot blend one version there, it's really easy to get back to that. So the way I open that up is just rename it and remove the one at the end of it. And in this case, I'll just increment it to zero two here. Click yes, even if it becomes unusable. And now to open this up, um, I could go through the you know file and open menu, but I could also just drag and drop this into Blender and click open. And now we're back to that original file. So once you save something, of course it saves it as it is, um, but then the previous save becomes the dot blend one. And if you have more versions, then it'll just, you know, trickle down into dot blend two, dot blend three, and however many you have. Again, that's in edit and preferences under save versions. 
but generally I have that off, but sometimes it's useful. So if you're wondering what all of those files were next to your original file, it's just the extra save versions. Okay, so now let's open a completely different file here. I'll go to File and Open, and in the downloads for this course, you'll have a file called GameDevicePreview.Blend. I'll go ahead and open that up, and this is actually something that we're going to be creating in the next course as an introduction to creating a whole project in Blender for the first time. For now though, I just want to use this as an example because it's a little bit prettier than just cubes and monkeys. We've talked about saving and opening files, but what about getting stuff from one file into another blend file? Well, the easiest way to do that is actually just copy and pasting. You can copy and paste objects between different instances of Blender. Now this is somewhat limited as it only works with objects, and the different instances of Blender have to be the same version, but if I just open up another instance here, I'll right click on my taskbar and click Blender. I'm just opening up the default scene here. I'll go ahead and delete all of my default items. And now I'll hit Control V to paste. Again, same hotkeys as pretty much every other software. And now I can paste these objects right in and all of their materials and stuff has come along with them. So if you need to move something from one blend file to another, just remember Control C and Control V. Now, another way to do that is appending. And that's a slightly longer but more reliable way to do it because it works between any Blender version. I'll go ahead and delete all of these objects that we've added here. And this time I'll go to File and Append. I'll navigate to that Blend file. Remember it's GameDevicePreview.Blend. And I'll double click on that Blend file and that'll show all of the folders inside of that Blend file. And I can bring any one of those into Blender. If I go to the Object folder, it'll show me all of the different objects and I could bring in all of these or just some of them. But I'll actually go ahead and hit the Back button and instead go to the Collection folder. Instead of importing individual objects, I'll import just the Game Device Collection. That will bring with it all of the objects inside of it. So I'll go ahead and click Append, and here we have that added to our scene. So again, that's File and Append. This time we'll bring in the pedestal, double click, and there we go. There's also a second function called Link, but this one's a little bit more advanced. And what it does is it brings in an instance from another blend file, and anytime you make a change in that original file, it'll also update it in any other linked files, but that's a much bigger topic for another day. We talk a lot about that in more advanced courses when it comes to animation. You can also import and export lots of different file types from Blender. To do that, just go to the Import or Export menus, and you can see all of the different supported file types. Pretty much any common 3D file type is available for you to use in Blender. But just be aware that you can't export or import things that are Blender specific. For example, vertices, edges, and faces are common to all 3D softwares. But Blender specific shaders, however, are not. So of course the geometry is going to transfer, but maybe not all of the shader detail that you were hoping for. Each different file type has pros and cons on what type of information it can transfer. So be sure to read up on that and make sure whatever one you choose works for you. If you're just importing or exporting basic geometry from ZBrush or Maya or whatever, then that'll usually work fine in any format. But if you're hoping to import and export advanced animation data, that's something that you'll have to research because it's super specific to what other program you're working with. The very last thing that I think is important to show you about saving things in Blender is how it handles textures. So if we go to our solid view shading options and go from color material to texture, you'll see that we actually have a texture on our game cartridge here. So in the future, you might be working with textures in Blender, and maybe you want to send your file to somebody else. Well, when they open it up, they're not going to be able to see that texture. It'll be shown as this bright pink, telling you that the texture is missing. This happens because Blender isn't actually storing the file of the image itself inside of the Blend file. It's just referencing wherever it is on your computer. So if you're going to send this file to somebody else, you'll either need to include a folder that has all of your textures with it and send it along with the Blend file, or you need to go to File, External Data, which in this case is Images, because that's something that is not stored internally in the Blend file itself, and turn on Automatically Pack Resources. Now this will definitely make your file size a lot larger because it has to store all of that data inside of it. So definitely be careful checking this on because it could seriously you know, bloat things if you're just using the same texture in a bunch of different files. But if you really need to send it to somebody else, check this on, automatically pack resources, and that'll save the image inside of the Blend file. And that way, whoever opens up the Blend file can see it, even if they don't have that texture elsewhere on their computer. We'll talk a lot more about saving and moving around textures in the fundamentals of texturing course. And it's not necessarily something you need to know right away, but for all of the people out there who are moving from another 3D software, I thought it was important to mention now. For the most part though, if you remember Control S to save and Control O to open, then you're ready to start your own projects.